Hey guys, thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be doing a Pilates back routine, focusing on mobilizing the spine, moving it without jerking in the spine or other parts of our body, which may be harmful. So today uh, my prop is going to be a lightweight foam yoga block. If you have a firmer or small pillow, you're welcome to use that. Um, you can use a small extra size ball but I would not recommend that. I'm looking for something that has significantly less give today. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to begin with my feet a little bit further out in front of me than I normally would so that I can release in my hip flexors. I'm going to take my block and place it between my knees. I'm going to be doing my exercises today with my heels roughly coming right out of my sits bones. So it goes big toe, knee, hip. So I want to go in straight back there. I'm going to go ahead and plant my feet or wiggle my toes to make sure that I'm not gripping with those. I'm going to sit straight up and pull in on the front of my shin to create space between my vertebra. I'm going to begin my uh, C-shaped curve rollbacks just to my sacrum right here. The space between your hip bones and your tailbone with my arms in the hug and tree position or a ballet first, if you will. I'm going to come right out in front of me. My hands are up here, scrunching my shoulders to my ears. My hands are right here. They're coming out of uh, my bra strap or where my sternum and my 12 for me. We begin by inhaling, growing tall. As I exhale, I'm going to drop my belly to my spine, tuck my tail, wrap my ribs in, and articulate back. I articulate forward and stack my spine to sitting tall. And exhale. If your toes lift off, that's fine, but try to remain connected through the back of your leg, squeezing your glutes, squeezing your inner thigh to hold onto your block. Don't release your ribs at the top and let them flare like I just did. It's important to keep them connected the whole time. Now, as we come down to our sacrum this time, think of dropping your ribs to your hip, dropping my belly button to my spine. We're going to do one more and then add on. And back up. Keep breathing. We're going to go ahead and do add figure eight arms on. We're going to keep our arms in this first ballet first position. Inhale. Shoulder blades down your back, dropping your belly to your spine, drawing your ribs to your hips. I'm going to begin by leaving both sits bones firmly planted into the mat. I'm going to rotate to my right. I'm going to scoop my arms down and come back through center. I'm going to rotate to the left, and I'm going to scoop down as if I'm scooping in my arms in water. And then I go right. Belly bend to spine. <sighs> Keep breathing. Here's three. Nice long neck, guys. I am not crunching my chin to my chest. It's not helping me in this exercise whatsoever. Abdominals in, shoulders down your back, two more on each side, and scoop, and scoop. Make sure you're not rocking off your back hip as you go to one side or the other, and articulate up. Counter stretch, remove your block, put the palms of your feet together as if they're hands free, and fold over your legs. You can take your arms, bring them underneath your legs, reach into your feet, and taper for that. And then I'm going to stack my spine for you. Take it up, tip of my head's the last thing to come up, plant my feet on the ground, place my block below my knees, Oops, squeeze on it, make sure knees, toes, hips all aligned, ballet first position, shoulders up, back and down, ribs in, nice long neck. Inhale, exhale, to articulate back to my sacrum, lifting my toes. I'm going to rainbow my right arm back, reaching back, and back around. I'm rotating my ribs, so above my belly button up is rotating on my body. Below my belly button is grounded and stable. I'm squeezing down the back chain of my body, driving my heels into my mat. I'm allowing my arm to float freely in the shoulder socket. Drop 
in my belly, my spine, drawing my ribs to my hips, relaxing through my neck. Three more to each side. Here's six. Squeeze in on your block. Curl a little deeper, tucking your tail a little bit more. Here's seven. One more to each side. And eight. And here we go. Articulate your spine up. Create space between your vertebra. Take your block out. We're going to squeeze it between our hands long ways. Pressing with the palm of our hands, not the fingers. And now we're going to exhale, articulate back to our sacrum. Shoulders down. Engaging our last by pressing the block down as if it's pressing onto something. From here, without changing the angle of my knee, I'm going to go ahead, float my right knee up so my shin is parallel to my mat. And lower on the exhale. And inhale and exhale on my left leg. And we go right. See how much of the movement you can keep out of your hip flexors and quad. Not that you won't feel it there, but we're trying to use our lower abdominals to lower and lift our legs. <sighs> Keep breathing. It's a warm-up exercise. I know this probably isn't very popular, but I am willing to let you breathe however you want, as long as you keep breathing at this point. I am inhaling on the lift and exhaling on the lower, though. I'm going to inhale on my block. I have it coming out of where I started my 12th row beat again. And look, I'm going to articulate up. Inhale, exhale, articulate back. I'm going to float one knee up to tabletop and the other knee up. I'm going to maintain, I'm going to pop out my ribs. I'm keeping my ribs, drawing towards my hip, drawing my sacrum to the mat. I'm going to lower, I still have my legs separated so that my, my heels are by my sister pose. Toe dip and exhale left. And inhale lower, exhale left. And right. And left. This is a challenge. My block is hovering over my knees. Here's five. Shoulders down your back. Nice long neck. If this is too much, you can go back to marching. Or if this is not your exercise today, you can go back to marching. The last count, we're gonna do one more. And exhale to lift and inhale, and exhale lift. Flip one foot down and the other, and now articulate up. Inhale, exhale. This is another add-on to this exercise. If you would like to stay with marching, you can. If you'd like to stay with the single leg toe dips, you can. I'm gonna exhale, rock back to my sacrum, squeeze into my block, engage my lats. Flip one leg up to tabletop and then the other. My legs are still separated. While they're still separated, I'm going to lower both legs. Toe dip and lift. This requires a lot of core control. Here's three. Hover your blocks over your knees. Four. Here's five. Six. And here is eight. And don't cheat yourself. Flip one foot down and then the other. Articulate up. Bring your feet together as if they're praying. Press them out slightly. Go ahead and fold over your legs. For a couple nice, deep, well-deserved breaths, we have one more exercise in this position. And then we'll be off and on our warm-up. Go ahead and articulate up. Place your block back between your knees. Lift your toes. Drive your heels into the mat to engage your back. Change your body. Squeeze your glutes. Draw on your inner thighs. Hands in front of you in a hug or tree position. Tuck your tail. Articulate your spine all the way down to the mat. Shoulders and base of your skull will touch. Inhale, nodding your chin to your chest. Squeeze in on your block to help you up. And exhale forward. Come up to sitting tall. See if you can press into the mat and grow taller out of the tip top of your head. Inhale back. And exhale up. And inhale back. Think of this as a breathing meditation with exercise. And grow tall. 
and squeeze in on your black, we are warming up our lower body with this warm up as well. Let's do two more. Neutral spine, tuck your chin to your chest, and articulate up. Good job, guys. We're going to go ahead, place our block to the side for just a little bit. Hold on behind underneath, elbows wide, tuck your tail and lower down. From there, I'm going to raise my legs up into tabletop, turn them out into a diamond shape position where my heels are squeezing together, my knees are separated, and I'm rotating my femur in the hip socket. I'm not going to go all the way out to working level. I'm not going to stay in tabletop position. I'm going to be halfway in between in a diamond position with my legs. I'm going to raise my fingertips to the ceiling. Inhale, exhale to curl up, reaching for the ends of my uppers. I'm going to get a big and pump you all. Like, inhale, two, three, four, five, and I exhale. Two, three, four, five. I'm going to float my arms up, reach my left arm through my legs, reach my right arm to the outside of my right foot, crunching gently on my obliques. Do not shift in my hip bones, and I'm going to inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Inhale, curl up deeper, and exhale. Float my arms up to the other side, right arm in between my legs, left arm to the outside of my left leg, crunching gently on my left obliques, and inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Place a hand behind your head if you need additional support. To the right again. You can also rest your head, neck, and shoulders, and continue. Do not crunch your hip to your ear. Crunch your oblique to reach. And inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Squeeze your heels. Lower your legs. Curl up deeper. And to the center. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. And now pulse forward, reaching your fingertips for 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, let go of the spine, two, one, and now we're going to close the book so our, our ankles, knees, and toes are squeezing, and squeeze to separate, rotate the femur, hip socket, and close, and open, heels are glued the entire time, curl deeper, place your hand behind your head so you need a little bit more support, six, drop your legs, seven, and eight, squeeze to back chin your body, and Ten. Draw your knees into your chest. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Draw your knees in. And gently rock from side to side. We're going to extend our legs long on the mat. Feel a nice stretch in the front of your hips. We're going to raise our hands up to the ceiling. Inhale, nod our chin to our chest, beginning to curl up and come up to sitting tall. From there, I'm going to rotate to one side. I have hug a tree arms here. I'm going to tuck my tail without rotating in my back sits bone. I'm going to roll down the right side of my body to the mat. When my head hits, I'll come back through center. Inhale, nodding my chin to my chest. Coming up to sitting tall. I'm going to rotate to the left. Tuck my tail. Roll down the left side of my body. Come back through center, inhale, and go to the right. Oops, sorry. I went to sitting tall first, and then I'm going to exhale, roll down the right side of my body. And back through center, inhale, dropping my belly by spine, pulling back, articulate up. Rock to the left, <sighs> tuck my tail, take a deep breath first, to really enjoy the movement. From here, we're going to do two around the world in each direction. We're going to go to the right, and the left, and the right, and then the left. Inhale, lift my chin and chest, rolling up, and I'm going to twist to the right, tuck my tail. Come back down, through center, rotate to the left. On my chin and my chest, come up and back through center and to the left. I'm twisting from above my belly button, my hips not rocking off. This is just a gentle spinal mobilization while using our legs to the right. And through center, and now to the right, and tuck. And through center, and to the left. Belly to spine, nice 
C-shaped curve through center and to the left. Tap your toe. Grab your belly, your spine. Through center and to the right. Now letting your chin to your chest. And up. Hands up to the ceiling. Took a class with my mentor Katie Rally yesterday. She reminded me of the importance of this exercise. Fold over flat back before you round. And then fold over your legs for an even deeper stretch. We're going to take a moment here. We've done a lot of really great forward flexion work. Really trying to mobilize the spine. We are not done yet. Then cheeky leg up, stacking my spine. My head will be the last thing to come up. Hold on behind my knees and articulate down. I'm going to stretch my legs long. Modifications for roll up. We are only going to do three traditional roll ups given all the other exercises we've done, but I would like to get the hamstring stretch that comes with the roll up. Fingertips up to the ceiling. If you can reach back without popping your ribs, you may touch your, floor, your uh, mat behind you. But if you do this, go ahead and reach, raise your arms to the tail. You're not popping your ribs any longer. So, inhale, not in your chin, your chest. Bring your hands, they're coming out of your sternum. <sighs> Exhale, still in your C-shaped curve. Fold over your legs, reach your long shoulders down your back. Inhale to pull back in your C-shaped curve when your sacrum hits. Exhale. When your head hits, float your arms over your head. Inhale, not in your chin, your chest. Exhale, to fold over. Inhale to pull back. Squeezing your glutes, squeezing your hamstrings, and inner thighs, just like in the warm up. And back, and one more. And inhale to pull back by back shoulders down. And hands up over your head. Good. We're going to scooch down just a little bit, or I am at least. I'm going to reach up. I'm going to grab my block. We're going to be doing some reverse ab curls. I'm placing the smaller end of my block on my side so it's centered over the bottom of where my sternum is 12 for me. I'm squeezing in on it. I'm pressing my arms down. So I'm squeezing on my ribs. I'm going to bring my feet up into a tabletop position. Now, when I do these, I'm, not, I have my, I'm pressing into this so I'm pressing my shoulders down as well. I don't want to round up like a Pringle. Rounding my shoulders in. So I'm going to press in. <sighs> Exhale. Imprint my spine in the mat. And then use my lower abdominals to just gently tap my knees to the block. Not a big movement. And release back to neutral spine. <sighs> Imprint your spine. Lift your tailbone ever so slightly with your lower abdominals. And release back to neutral. <sighs> and tap. Wrap your ribs. Drop your belly to your spine. Squeeze your glutes. Don't allow the angle of your knees. But like, don't go like this. We're not, we're not, this isn't a jamming. We're staying in this tabletop position, imprinting our spine, and then lifting ever so gently. This will come in handy later, I promise. <laughs> and lower abdominal activation. Nice long neck. Trying to shake it out a little bit. One more. Good. We're moving on to a single leg circle. We will not leave, need the block for that. I'm going to put mine on the ground since my uh, mat is elevated. Put your block wherever it can stay handy. I'm going to extend my left leg long. Bend my right knee to tabletop. Extend it up to the ceiling with a straight leg. If this is all the further you can get with a straight leg, that's fine. Please leave it here. Both of my hips are grounded. My heels grounded, pressing into the into the floor, into my mat. I'm going to place my hands down by my side, fold my shoulders open, inhale my leg across my body, and when it gets to the, I'm going to exhale it back up, drawing my ribs here, dropping my belly button to my spine. My circles at this time are the size of a large exercise ball. If you can make them larger, that's great. They're not necessary for this exercise for what we're about to add on. So, keeping my 12th rib on, when I bring my foot across, I'm going to allow my hip to hike and come off the mat ever so gently. I'm going to feel it in my T-band. As I swing my foot down, 
When it gets, when it's pointing to the end of my mat, both hip bones become grounded. I'm going to leave both hip bones grounded as I circle my leg up and around. And I'm going to float my leg up, leave my 12 ribs on. Don't swing your leg. Use your breath to assist you. Now we're going to reverse. No hip lift on the first three. And inhale down, two, three, and exhale up. Two, three, and one more. Two, three, you're at the bottom and up. Two, three, and now one. Two, three, and now begin to hike your hip for the IT band stretch. When it comes back to your nose, both hips are grounded. And inhale, open. And begin that gentle, gentle lift. And one more. Still engaging through your standing or uh, stabilizing leg. Draw your knee into your chest. Extend that leg on the mat. Bring your left leg to tabletop. Extend it to the ceiling. Again, wherever you need to go for a straight leg. No hip hike on the first three. Inhale your leg across the line of your body. And exhale it back up to the top. And down. Two, three, and up. Three and down, two, three and up, two, three and now hike your hip, leaving the twelve rib on, and down, and up, and down and across, and up, and down, and up, and now we'll reverse. No hip hike and down. Roll your shoulders open. If you need to flip your palms to the ceiling, please do so. Inhale, and that'll facilitate you leaving your shoulder open. Ooh, that circle got away from me a little bit. It's a little too big. Inhale, and exhale. Now we're going to have the hip hike for three. Inhale, two, three. When your foot's down to the bottom, hike your hip ever so gently. Nice AT band stretch. Up, two, three, and inhale, two, three, and up, two, three. One more, two, three, and up, two. Three, draw your knee in to your chest. Place your hands behind your head. Oh, inhale, exhale. Ah, that one was a little rough to come up. We're going to do rolling like a ball. And for those of you with neck problems, osteoporosis, osteopenia, lower back problems, anything that really inhibits you from rolling on your spine, there is a, an alternative exercise that you can do, a modified exercise for rolling like a ball. We're all going to come to the front of our mat, scooching our sits and bones to our heels. I'm going to hover my feet off the mat and hold on anywhere from underneath my patella to above my ankle on my shin. My tail is tucked slightly. I am balancing. I'm going to draw my ribs to my hips. Have a gentle curve in my spine. I'm not crunching my chin to my chest. I'm going to look like this. I'm looking between the seat of my pants and my heels. Drawing my belly button strongly in, dropping my wrist to my hips, engaging my lats, draw my shoulders down my spine. For those of you looking for a modification, we're going to inhale, exhale, deepen our contraction and hold it. For count of five, count of ten, and release. We'll repeat that until we are done rolling like a ball. Everyone else, we're going to squeeze our glutes to throw ourselves off balance. We're not going to throw ourselves. When we squeeze our glutes, it'll knock us off balance. We'll roll back to the tips of our shoulder blades, not any further because we don't want it to get into our neck. And exhale strongly to roll back up. If you feel your lower back slam in or slam into the mat, you have kicked out and not stayed in the C-shaped curve position. Please maintain the C-shaped curve the entire time. And if you feel that you cannot get up, exhale deeper to try to lift. Otherwise, just try it again. Or go ahead and roll up if that doesn't work after a few times and start over. Okay, I'm gonna count to eight. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes and inhale, and exhale, and inhale. Go at your own speed. I'm not placing my feet down. Drop your shoulders, like I just did. Here it is four. There's no shame in making the huge exhale to get back up, guys. Better to make the huge exhale to get back up. Woo! Almost didn't make it there. Let's do two more. Here's seven. 
And here is eight. I'm going to place my feet back down. I'm going to scoot back. I'm going to grab my block one more time. We're going to do the single leg stretch and the double leg stretch. Place my block in my hand. Tuck my tail under. Take it back. Bring both feet to tabletop. Inhale, exhale, curl up. My block is hovering over my shins. I'm going to slide my legs against each other the entire time. My big toe come to my knee on both sides and it won't drop down any further. We're going to keep this very contained today. I'm going to extend my left leg and pull it back in. And my right leg. See how my, my knee is connected to my big toe? My legs are rubbing against each other the whole time. I'm curling up deeper. And inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Here we go. We have six. And seven. You guessed it. We're going to eight. And eight. From there, we're going to place the block between our calves. We're going to do four like this and four in opposite direction. I'm going to inhale. Extend my legs out to my working level. Squeeze into my body. Use my lower abdominals to pull my knees back from the tail up. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And, and inhale. And exhale. Placing the block in my hand just like it was for the single legs. I'm going to inhale. Extending my arms and my legs. My biceps are by my ears. I'm going to take my block in my right hand and bring it around. And inhale. Block in left hand. And exhale. Inhale. Block in both hands. Block in right hand. Exhale. Final one. Good. Rest my head, neck, and shoulders. From there, I'm going to extend both my legs long. I'm going to drop my block. So it's coming out of my sternum or my shoulder. I'm going to extend my left leg while I draw my right leg in using my abdominals. And I'm going to switch. I'm reaching energy out of my leg that's extending away from me. I'm not reaching it all the way down to the mat. I want to keep an absolutely strong hold on my lower abdominals, wrapping my ribs, drawing my shoulders down my back, engaging my lats, and I'm still breathing. Shake your neck out if you like it. Our head, neck, and shoulders is not raised on this one. We want energy coming out of our top foot and energy shooting out of our reaching away foot. As if we're, our legs are growing longer. We're going to do two more on each side. One more. Belly button to spine. And eight. Draw our knees into our chest. Place the block between our calves. Reach it up. Hands behind your head. Lace together. Fingers lace together. Thumbs along down your neck. I'm going to curl up right here. Reaching my ribs to my hips. As I lower my feet for one, two, three. I bring my head down to the mat. And then I exhale lift. Two, three. Lower. Two, three. And lift. Two, three. The trick is keeping control here. Squeezing in on the block. Feeling the engagement down our thighs, not crunching my chin and my chest, not releasing my ribs, and not allowing my sacrum to rock. So the box of my body is staying still. You know where my head, neck, and shoulders are curling up. Keep breathing, guys. I said the key to this is and then I listed like five things. Getting too hot for the glasses. <laughs> and one more. Take the box out. Don't lower your head. We're going to reach the block over our shins. And I'm going to rotate. I still have my big toe touching my knee. But I've used my oblique to squeeze it and bring the block the outside of my right leg. Rub them together. And rotate to the left. Again, the twist is coming from above my belly button. So my sacrum is completely stable. Reach up a little deeper. Here's four. Here's five. Four. 
See if you can crunch your ribs to your hips. We have two more on each side. And then we're gonna move on to some fun choreography. Come back to center. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Take your feet away from you, a little bit wider than hip distance. We're going to just windshield wipe our shins, allowing our hip to pop off or gently float off from side to side. Trying to leave our ribs on though. That was not an easy one. So, let's go ahead and move on. We have spine stretch and then open leg rocker saw combination. In case you were worried you weren't going to get any, do anything challenging today. We're just going to do three spine stretches. Go ahead and articulate out. Try to build your spine. Just immobilize your spine just a little bit. We're going to add just a little bit of a hinge forward at the end. Not an articulation so much as just a flat back situation. My feet are separated a little bit wider than hip width. For those of you with low back problems or hip problems or tight hamstrings, go ahead and tent your knees ever so gently, driving your heels into the mat. Those of you who do not, feel free to pull up on the muscles on the tops of your knees. Really working those legs. You will feel it in your quads. Reach your fingertips forward, hinging forward slightly to come out of your hip flexors. Inhale, nodding your chin to your chest, allowing your arms to float down with your upper body. Exhale to float forward. Inhale to come up to a flat back, reaching your fingertips where the wall is slimy. Exhale, pull the really skin and articulate up. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, reach with a flat back. Exhale, pull the really skin. Exhale, one more. Really pull up on those kneecaps since that's what you're doing. Draw your ribs in, belly button up and in. Inhale, letting forward. Shake your legs out. I'm going to scoot forward ever so slightly. I need to be able to roll back, but I need to be able to extend my legs as well. I don't want to roll off the back of my back of my elevated mat, otherwise that would be embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm going to draw my feet in. My knees are separated, my toes are touching. I'm going to bring my toes in. I'm going to hover my feet off. I'm going to come at an angle to show you this move. I will not stay here. Again, I'll roll off my mat if I do. <laughs> We're going to do a warm up. Drop our belly into our spine. Roll our shoulders up, back, and down. Draw our ribs here. I'm going to extend my right leg. I'm trying to bring my right leg so it's in line with my right shoulder. And lower. And extend. And lower. And lift. And lower. And a left leg. Extend it. Again, you want to keep it in line with your shoulder. And lower. And lift. And lower. One more. And lower, and no, both legs. See if you can bring them in line with your shoulders. If not, no more problem. And lower, and lift, and lower. And we're going to go ahead, for me while I switch over, we're going to lift and stay here. For those of you with, uh, let's settle down for one second, our legs, if osteoporosis, osteopenia, uh, low back problems, neck problems, please don't do this. Please just hold the control, holding the movement, drawing our belly button to our spine, holding the contraction, just like we did in rolling like a ball. For those of you with tight hamstrings, come right here. Inhale, exhale, up. Inhale to tuck our tail, rock back to the tips of our shoulders. Exhale, come up, hold it. Draw our toes in, extend our legs long, arms out to a T, rotate or twist to the right, saw, dive, articulate up, come back through center, Draw our toes in, tucking our tail for the balance, and extend, and exhale, and lift. Toes touch, slide them along the mat, flexing our feet, arms out to your feet, twist to the left, and swan it, and up, through center, tuck our tail, draw our feet in, extend to open leg rocker, inhale, exhale. Toes in the center, slide them out, twist to the right, 
and sell soft for baby toe. Back through center. Draw your toes into the center. Extend up to open leg rocker. Draw your shoulders down right. Pull down on your legs to engage your lats. Inhale back. Exhale up. Hold it. Draw your belly back your spine. Toes in center. Extend out to swan sitting tall. Rotate to the left. And dive. And up through center. Draw your feet in. Extend open leg rocker. Inhale. Exhale. Hold it. Toes tap in center. Extend to a soft. Rotate to the right. Soft your baby toe. Up. Center. Draw your feet in. Tuck your tail. Lift to open leg rocker. Final one. Inhale. <sighs> exhale. I am a heavy exhaler, guys. No, nothing to be ashamed about. <laughs> and exhale. And up. Through center. Draw your feet into a butterfly. Go ahead. And flap your wings. <sighs> so, we're going to do two variations of court screw. We are going to use our block for one of them. I'm going to come down onto my back. Place my block just like it was reverse ab curl because you guessed it, we're going to add a reverse ab curl on the second variation, that, on the first variation of this and the second one actually. So, my legs are on tabletop. I'm going to rock to my right hip. I'm going to roll down. When my thighs are reaching away from me, I'm going to plant both of my back hip bones into the mat. I'm going to rock over to the left and come back to tabletop. I'm in tabletop. I'm going to tuck my tail and tap my knee. I'm going to go to the left and go down. Plant both of my hip bones when my thigh bones reach away from me. Up to the right. Back to tabletop. Imprint my spine and tap. And right. And roll. Don't allow your hip bones or your sacrum to get away from you. Ooh, my sacrum's totally flat here. I'm going to roll up the right. And back to tabletop. Imprint and lift. One more to each direction. To the right. All 12 ribs are still on. I'm only giving a gentle lift in my hips like we did for um, the single leg circle. Uh, I believe we did it on another one. I <laughs> can't recall it right now. I'm so sorry. But this is all just a variation of the same exercise. Extend your legs straight up to the ceiling. When we lift this time, we're going to our legs will come in towards our nose slightly, but control it so that you're not like, bam, I don't want your legs or your knees touching your block when you lift. It is a slight little baby lift coming solely from the lower abdominals. So I'm going to rock to my right. I'm going to come down through the center. I'm going to plant my whole sacrum, rock to the left, come up, and I'm going to lift tiny left. Come through the center. Plant your sacrum over to the right. Up, plant your sacrum first, and then lift to the right. Down, around to the left. And plant your sacrum, and for your spine and lift. To the left, and down, around. After you watch me do it, go ahead and look up to the ceiling as you strain your neck, and print and lift. One more to each side to the right. Leave your shoulders with the mat as much as humanly possible. And left. One more final one. Left. Plant your sacrum. Right. Plant your sacrum. And lift. And lower. Draw your knees into your chest. We're going to place our block to the side again. We're going to be moving into salt swan. And we're going to take it up, 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 up. Okay. We're going to roll over onto our stomachs. We're going to be doing two variations of swan prep. The first one's just going to be traditional. We're going to add a twist on the second one. If you find that you cannot do that, please go ahead and continue with this variation of swan prep or counter stretch child's pose. Okay. We're going to come down, our forehead sitting on the mat. Biceps are squeezing our ribs. Our hands are under our shoulders. We're squeezing our inner thighs together. We're drawing our belly bent to our spine and bringing our ribs together. From there, on the inhale, it's as if there's a marble on the top of our head. We're going to begin to bring our head up. As soon as our head comes up, our shoulders are going to come up. Drawing our ribs in. We're going to take it up, 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 into a swan as far as we can go without shrugging our shoulders up. And then we're going to begin 
to bring the marble back up to our head. We turn our belly button to our spine and are taking it down to the front of our body. Inhale, reach long with the crown of your head. Squeeze with your inner thighs. If you feel this in your low back, begin by drawing your belly button to your spine a little bit more firmly. If that still does not work, squeeze your legs together all the way. It will inhibit, for example, what? I have squeezed my legs together completely. I'm going to inhale. I cannot come up as high in my swan, but my low back is protected and my glutes, they on fire. And now I'm going to articulate back down to the mat. From there, I'm going to go into the one arm twisting swan variation. I'm going to take my right or my left hand, I'm going to place it underneath my forehead. So my, my uh, forehead's resting on my leg pillow. Take my right hand. I'm going to slide it in closer to the midline. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale to lift. I'm going to rotate to the right, uh, left. If I can, I'm going to extend my arm. I'm going to bend it back. It's coming straight out of my shoulder. Rotate back and articulate down. Articulate up and rotate. Extend so my arm's coming right out. It's not coming behind me. Bend it back in. Rotate. Draw your shoulder down your back. Whew. If you felt your shoulder going up to your ear, don't curl up as high in your articulation. Not, not curl up. Articulate up as high. Rotate. And extend. Back. And articulate down. After this, we'll, we'll all be doing a child's pose. So don't you fret. If it is hurting your back, please don't continue. There is a difference between work and pain. Go ahead and take your right hand, place it under your forehead like a pillow. Draw your left hand even closer into the middle. Like draw your shoulders down your back. Draw your belly up to your spine. Inhale, articulate up. Twist to the right. Extend your arm so your fingers are coming directly out of your shoulder, not behind your shoulder. Bring your hand back. Rotate and articulate down behind your belly to your spine. Inhale and press up. Rotate to the right. Extend your arm and back. Draw your belly to your spine and articulate down. Final one in this position. And rotate and extend. Squeeze in the back chain of your body. Squeeze in the front chain of your body. And articulate down. Place your hands on your side. Separate your knees, toes together. Press back for a child's pose. Arms reaching long in front of you. If you'd like, come up on your fingertips. Bring it to your left hand. Thread it underneath your right arm. Pull her shoulder away from her ear. Now look out under that right arm. Pass her left hand to your tips. Then come back to center. Unwinding my body. Take my right arm. Thread it underneath my left. Look out underneath my left arm. My head's resting on my right ear as I look past my arm. Come back through the center. I know this is what everyone wants to hear. We're going to articulate it up. We're moving on to neck pull. <laughs> We're going to take our block. I'm going to come out to the city. I'm going to place my block flat between my ankles or my calves. I'm going to squeeze that baby. Again, hamstring problems, uh, low back problems. Go ahead and pop your knees slightly. You can keep your block right here between your calves the whole time, or you can bring it up between your knees. Kind of different. We're going to do neck pull from right here today. We've worked so hard on keeping our shoulders down our back. Let's not endanger that by placing our hands behind our head. I know this is a classical position. Sometimes, though, it's just nice to get a little help with something. Am I right? So, hinge forward slightly to get out of your hip flexors. Draw your ribs together. Another tip that my, my mentor, Katie Rowley, taught me, draw your abdominals to your belly button. We're gonna hinge back with a flat back, as if I'm stuck between two panes of glass. When I've gone as far as I can, or when my legs become light, I'm going to tuck my tail, and then I'm going to articulate my spine down to the bottom. Not my chin to my chest, just like I won't try not to crush your chin to your chest, both over my legs. From there, I'm going to extend my back in a front Hinge, flat back position, drawing my ribs and stuff, reaching my forehead where the wall is sealing me. 
I'm going to stack my spine straight up to sitting. Let's do that again, guys. I'm going to flat back, lean back. Tuck my tail line down as far as I can. Articulate down with control. Inhale, squeeze your block. Flip over my legs. Hinge up, reaching the tip top of my head for where the wellness limit is. There's a laser shooting up the top of my head. Flat back, hinge all the way up. Final one. You guys are doing great. Let's make this the best one yet. <sighs> All right, let's go. Inhale, hinge back. Shoulders down your back. Tuck your tail, belly button to spine. Inhale, not in my chin. I just drop you my head and I say, in a C shape, I'm rolling over. Hinging up, reaching my head forward. We're going to go ahead and actually use this in our sideline legs. The class just keeps getting better and better, am I right? I'm going to be right here if I can stay out of my neck. I'm going to be right here if I'm tired or if I'd like a little support coming out of my side body. Either way, I'm going to be pressing in my block. That way, if I'm rocking back and forth, my block's going to give me away. So, everything from your Hips up, we're staying stable. This is the stabilizing section of your body. I'm going to come up onto my shoulder. I'm going to flex both my feet. I'm going to raise my hip up to hip height. People who think your hips are up here, they are not. You are making this so much harder on yourself. Go ahead and stay right here. We're going to float our foot forward and flex it to pull it back. And two. Look down. Are you rocked forward? Or are you rocked back in your hips like this? Rock forward so you can stay out of your low back. Make sure that this exercise is not going to bother you there. Belly button to spine. Ribs together. I'm squeezing my bottom leg as well. Squeezing my glutes. Should we flex back? I forgot that, didn't I? <laughs> Here's nine. And here is ten. And now we're going to kick our foot forward. I'm going to bend my knee in. Reach my heel for my glute. And I'm going to bring my leg behind me. I'm going to extend my leg back as far as it was for the first exercise, and sweep it through for bicycle. Now, bend it back, and reach. Here's three. Try to keep the top half of your body completely still. And here is five. Sweep it all the way forward, no cheats. Sweep it back. Now bend it to kick your booty. Bring your knee forward, and extend your leg. Woo! Sweep it back. Bend and extend. Here's four. And here is five. Now I'm going to stack my legs, turn my feet out to Pilates feet. I'm squeezing my glutes strongly. I'm lifting back up out of my body. I'm resetting my pulling my shoulder blade down, my shoulders down my back. I'm going to float it up and flex it down. Make sure you're not rocking back to get your leg up. Bring it forward in front of your body ever so slightly. Just because it's called kicking up and kicking down doesn't mean that your body moves like that. It might not be built that way. Keep the flex. Flex it up. I know my body is not. I have to bring my foot forward. Some people's are. Here's three. And four. Drawing in on everything. And five, sorry. Now, I'm going to drag my toe along the inside of my leg to my knee. I'm going to extend it and flex it to lower. Bicycle to the side. Here's three. Or bicycle and turnout. Four. Squeezing my glutes, not rocking back on my hips. Keeping my foot flexed, I'm going to kick it up to reverse. Point to tap my knee and drag my toe to the inside of my leg. Two. Three. Draw your belly to your spine. Here's four. And here is five. From there, I'm going to float my leg up to hip height again. Kick it all the way forward. Around in the back. And forward. As wide as you can without rocking through on your hips. These are large shuffles. They are super hard. And kick it forward. And now go back. Rotating my femur or my hip freely. Now parallel and rotate. One more. With control and grace 
and dignity. Place your top leg on your bottom leg. If you collapse it down, just know I wanted to do that too. Go ahead and go to the other side. So, again, if you feel like you'd like to really focus on lifting your bottom side body up, make your arm into a pillow, lift it up, press it on your back so you can feel if you're cheating. Otherwise, lift up onto your forearm, fingertips facing front. Woo, lifting up out of your side close to the mat, rocking forward ever so gently so you're not sinking in to your sciatic or hurt in your low back. Flex your feet, float it up to have a height. Don't forget your hips probably are not this wide. Kick it forward and flex to pull it back. Squeeze, and now squeeze your glutes. Don't just pop back there or allow your front of your body to come forward. Squeeze your leg back. This is the best part of the sideline legs. <laughs> Draw your belly to your side. Knit your ribs together. Good job, guys. And 10. Now kick your foot forward. Bend at the knee, reaching your heel for your glute. Extend your leg behind you. Now extend. And kick it forward. Glute. Back. And then extend. Make sure you're not cheating yourself on the movements. Feel the nice quad stretch and the hamstring curl, which is not as nice all at the same time. <sighs> Press into your block to engage your lats. And now reverse. Kick it back. Kick your glute. Bring it forward. Extend your leg. Draw your belly to your spine. Making sure you're not rocking. Here's three. I don't know about you guys, but some days I'm like, oh my God, is sideline legs ever going to be over? And right now it's one of those days. <laughs> and extend. Now, place your feet on top of each other. Turn it out. Squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your inner thigh. Reset by drawing your shoulder down your back and lifting up out of your side closest to the mat. Now kick up and lower. Two. Don't forget to breathe. Four. And five. And flex it down. Now flex it up and point. And flex and point. Here's three. Four. And five. Now, turn it out bicycle. Draw your toe into your knee. Extend and flex. And two. Lift up on your side. Three. Squeeze your glutes. Four. And here is five. Leaving it flex, we kick it up and point and drag our toe down to our other foot and flex. Woo! Three, four. I don't know about anyone else, but I have worked up a sweat. <laughs> and now we're going to float our foot up to hip height. Kick it forward and up and around, parallel and through. Try not to rotate your hips too much. Three, we're almost done with this side, guys. Here's four. Or this direction. And five. And now we reverse. We kick it back and through. Squeezing our glutes. Up and around. And back. Here's three. Oh, this leg's so tired. I won't go up at all. Here's four. And here is five. With grace and control and dignity, place your top leg on your bottom leg. Lift yourself up to a sitting position, like I just did. I wasn't full of grace and dignity, but I guess I didn't flop too hard. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my block. We are now going to do some side bending exercises. For those of you who cannot stack your knees to the side to sit, you can do crisscross applesauce, and I would recommend that you continue with the mermaid exercise throughout all three exercises in the side bending series that I'm about to teach. If you cannot sit like that, feel free to sit in a diamond position. Again, though, mermaid's going to be your sweet spot for right now. Otherwise, for everyone else, if you have a wrist issue, consider working from right here in a fist, on your hand, grab a weight, place it down, reach down. I want your weight under your shoulder. 
and that's where you'll be. So you're not on your rest. A uh, little exercise weight ball, not an exercise ball, an exercise weight ball will do the same thing for you. Maybe even a little bit kinder. Okay. Traditional mermaid position. My, my legs are stacked on top of each other. My heels are reaching into my booty. I've leaned over. I'm not sinking into it. I'm lifting up out of my side. My wrist is close to underneath my shoulder. My other hand, my opposite hand is on top of my shin. I'm going to bend my elbow in. Reach over, pressing into the mat, draw my shoulder down my back, reaching my bicep up by my ear. I'm going to reach up, grab onto my shins with my opposite hand, and side bend, reaching over to my knees. And then come back up. Place my hand down with grace and dignity. Control. Reach over to the side. Ooh, the top arm is shaking. What did I do to it, right? And now I'm going to reach over to the other side. One more. Belly button to spine. Place your hand down before you begin to bend, reaching your elbow into your hip. And up. From there, I'm going to place my hand back down. I'm going to slide my feet about an inch away from my booty so that my shins are parallel with the end of my mat. Again, my hand, my wrist is underneath my shoulder. Hold my shoulder up, back, and down. We're going to do side bend on our knees and shins. So to get up, we're going to begin to lift, squeezing our glutes, pressing our hips forward, and bending over like a mermaid off of our booty to here. From there, we're going to keep squeezing our glutes, press and tap our hip, and then we're going to reach our arm, rainbow arm back up, up and over, and press our glutes even harder, keeping our knees together. One more. Tap your hip. Your, your, uh, bend slightly right here, but not too much, as little as possible, and reach. And now, come back down. Shake out your wrist if you need to. One more set of three exercises. We are going to do twist one on our knees and shins. Twist one is uh, like a snake on the mat. Moving our palm to the ceiling. Reaching up. I want to reach up. My arms are going to come to a T. My glutes are squeezed, hips forward. I'm going to rotate my above my belly button up. Trying to thread my hand underneath. Come back up to a T and lower back down. Squeeze my glutes and lift. Arms to a T. Belly button to spine. Rotate shoulders and untwist. And down. Leaving my hips face forward the whole time with your headlights. Steering straight at you. I'm going to lift. Leaving my headlights facing you. Rotate. And up. And lower. From there, I'm going to leave my palm up. I'm going to gently pull my hand down. Circle it three times in each direction. Now, to the other side. For those of you who are in crisscross applesauce, please switch the flip of your leg so the other leg is in front. Everyone else, come into the mermaid position. Stack your shins. Bring your heels to your glutes. Come down into the position, lifting up out of your side already. Wrist under your shoulder. Palm on the ceiling on your opposite shins. Bend your elbow. Reach up, draw your ribs in, bicep by your ear, your arm reaching over your head, straighten your elbow. Ooh, this side is way less flexible, guys. And now I'm going to come down, squeezing my knees the whole time to create control. Adjust as you need. Bend and reach. Pressing down into the mat to lift up out of your side closest to the mat and up. And reach the opposite side, pulling on your shins. One more mermaid. And up. And pull across. Okay. You place your hand. Bring your, your glutes slightly away. Your heels slightly away from your glutes. 
You're going to shift your hips forward like an inch. Create some space for lift up, right? Adjust your body to each. You have your hands back here. You're not going to get very far on that side bend, right? Palm up to the ceiling. Squeeze your glutes to lift. Drawing your belly into your side. Reaching over. Bicep by your ear. Now, drop your hips and tap. And squeeze your glutes. And oblique still lift. And drop your hips and tap. And squeeze up. Up, 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 up. Lifting up out of your side. You look like a rainbow. It's beautiful. And lower. Now, for those of you feeling wrist pain on the side, don't forget, you can go on your fist, you can grab the weight, you can do an exercise weight ball, not a tiny little exercise ball. You're gonna probably roll right off of that. So, from here, twist one, leg snake. Squeeze your glutes and lifts, arm to a T, belly to spine, leaving the head lights on your hips facing forward. We're going to round our arm in, rotating our shoulders to the mat. Threading our arm nearish underneath our other arm, back out to a T and float it down and squeeze left. Arms to a T and rotate under. And open and down and left. Headlights facing forward, right? And open and down. Okay, come on out of that. I'm gonna take that hand forward. Pull with my palm away from me. Pull my fingers gently down or pull from the palm gently down. We're just releasing in our hand. Flip the palm away from us. Pull that back. And now I'm going to roll my wrist three times in each direction. Now, I'm going to come to a wide diamond shape. I'm going to come to the butterfly. I'm going to stretch my legs up straight. Again, it's right there. It's like Goldilocks. Not too hot, not too cold, just right? Okay, I'm going to hold on somewhere, just like in rolling like a ball beneath my patella, above my ankle, where I'm comfortable. I like to hold on a little bit closer to my knee because we're going to do cat-cow from here. I'm going to tuck my tail, draw my ribs, my hips. I'm not going to round down my shoulders. I'm going to hang from my shins. So, now I'm going to start with my upper body. I'm going to come up. I'm going to snake. Are still in my belly button, still in. I got a nice chest expansion. I'm not cranking my head to my back of my back of my head to my back. Now I'm going to begin at my lower abdominals. I'm going to tuck. I'm going to roll back. I'm going to hang out from my shins. From there, I'm going to begin to come through, pushing through my chest, still holding on to the tuck in my lower abdominals until I cannot anymore, and pull up, pressing down gently into my shins to create more space in between my vertebra to get more expansion. One more. Tuck my tail and then pull back through. And then pull back through again. And around and press gently into my shins, growing taller. Taller, 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 taller. Okay, come back to neutral. We're going to do one more gentle spinal twist in this position. Take a deep breath, and then you guys will be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna float my hands off of my shins. I'm going to rotate to the left, place my right hand somewhere on my shin, below my patella, above my ankle, bring my hand gently to the back, and look over, trying to gaze over my shoulders. Float my hands up, come back through center, bring my left hand somewhere on my shin, below my patella, above my ankle, float my left, or my right finger goes back, and gently twist, looking back over my right shoulder, hopefully, maybe not. I'm going to float up and around, place my hands down gently, drawing my belly to my spine, leaving both sits bones firmly grounded in the mat and twist. I'm going to come back up through the center, rotate to the other side, and twist. One more time on each side, guys. Press into your shin, into the mat. Feel yourself grow taller. Feel the nice stretch around your sits bones. Go through the top of your head and around. And grow taller. Come back through center. Take a big inhale. 
inhale, reach up without floating your ribs away or expanding them or flaring them. Exhale, palms up to the ceiling, rolling your shoulders down your back, feeling a nice release. Rest your hands on your shins. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed class, and I hope you'll join me next time. Thank you.